he was hearing from here and he was looking at the photograph and then something happened here he rushed to me and told sir did you remember we both had prayed for one garland and swami had sent so many then i realized how god answer how fortunate i would be swami if you know my name swami had called me and asked me hey what's your name isn't it satyanarayana i went to the lord i looked at him and told no swami my name is satish 55 years back from now when i was born my parents had given me a name satyanarayana he proved to me bangaru i not only know the name that you know as your name but i know the name that you forgot that it is your name साईश्वराय विद्महे सत्यदेवाय धीमहि तन्न सर्व प्रचोदया प्रेयरफुल सैल्यूटेशंस एट द लोटस फीट ऑफ आवर लविंग मदर साई रेस्पेक्टेड एल्डर्स brothers and sisters of sai family sai ram to all of you like everyone seated here you have a tale to tell how you have come into sai fold swami's relationship with each of us is unique one to one heart to heart by his grace our family had come to the lotus feet around 45 years ago his grace had made me a bal vikas student bal vikas transforms a child from becoming a street dog from that stage to a street lamp a road side pebble to a precious gem balvikas instills love in the heart of a small child yes balvikas did in still love for our lord i still remember as a child i used to come often to prashanti nilayam and when it is time for me to go back home i would be continuously praying to swami swami please swami bless me in such a way that we will miss the bus or maybe the train is cancelled or our reservation is not confirmed if not all this swami by then i used to observe elders forgetting things like their keys spectacles nowadays mobiles i used to see them forgetting i was asking swami swami when my parents are returning home they should forget me and go back and when they reach home they must be checking their luggage yes all the four suitcases are here three bags are here but something seems to be missing yes yeah satish is missing okay doesn't matter he we must have forgotten him at prashant nilayam it's okay he is with swami that was my prayer to swami but 
it didn't happen in the real sense in the literal sense but swami did bless me he did answer my prayer it was balvikas which instilled that love for swami and it was the loving lord responded it was one interview my father was praying to swami swami he is not our son swami you please take him swami he is your son swami please adopt him swami he was praying to swami and you know what swami has told swami very lovingly told not only he sir any student joined in my college i have accepted them that was the assurance bhagwan had given bal vikas slowly directed me to become a sevadal member i still remember going to prashanti nilayam for bhagwan's 59th birthday 60th birthday and working in fact as early as by morning 6 o'clock bhagwan used to come we all used to get into the vehicles swami used to be standing and waiting till all of us have left to do service in the villages nearby he used to inspire personally and encourage us to go to the villages and serve it took almost 11 years for me to be called by the lord to become his student in fact he literally had called me one such occasion i had come to do service as sevadal member at prashanti nilayam after the service period i wanted to stay for some more days and have darshan i think it was summer summer time there was some place after the students were accommodated in the bhajan hall there was some place left so we devotees were called in yes i was the in first line of the devotees it was for bhajans to start our lord was coming in the corridor or in the portico adjacent to the bhajan hall through the window he was looking inside he looked into me he looked at me and told ah tie my hindi that's what that's what what swami had told i was wondering how could swami speak to me i am not a student maybe i am wearing white dress that's why swami is thinking i am a student that was my human interpretation and what did the lord do immediately he looked at the student in front of me and told ah time my in the bhajan ki yes it's time for bhajan yes it was time for bhajan and it was time for me to become his student in no time i was at prashanti nilayam again to give my entrance examination it was in 87 i was from telugu medium school and i didn't understand anything what was asked in the entrance examination i didn't even know how to fill up the form i don't know what our lord has written for me he chose me as his student and when i gave the examination and that night swami had come in my dream swami was coming towards me some elders were following swami i think looking back now i can say they must be officials of the university swami came near me swami showed me to them and told he is selected i was very happy in the morning i got up i was thrilled swami is going to bless me with a seat in his college i was thinking the next day the same dream 
got repeated with slight extension. This time, Swami introduced me to the officials and told he is selected for Brindavan campus. At that time, I didn't know anything about Brindavan campus. I had a strong desire to be with Swami. I didn't know that Swami would come to Brindavan and give so much of love. I was thinking if I go to Brindavan campus, I would be missing Him. So in the dream, I was crying to Him, Swami, please Swami, please Swami, please keep me with you at Prashanti Niliyam. I woke up, I noticed tears rolling down. The third day, the same dream got repeated. Bhagavan came, He introduced me as usual, he is selected for Brindavan campus. I was crying. So much I was crying and finally the merciful Lord looked at me lovingly and told, Sare, ikkade undu. It's okay, you can stay here itself. And then something unique had happened. I was holding his hand I was kissing his hand. I knelt down, fell at his feet, kissed his lotus feet and the dream ended. I was very happy. After a few days, the results were announced. We all were called for admission. I came to Prashanti Niliyam, but I noticed there was a list put up my name was in the students who were selected for Brindavan campus. And the dream became true. I was crying. Literally, I was weeping, thinking that I would be away from our Lord. We were all called to the administrative building. Our then registrar, sir, Sri Chakravati Garu, was giving us directions. He gave a pleasant news to all of us. This tonight, Swami is hosting a special dinner for all of you. You all must be coming. After bhajans, immediately you should come to the hostel and you will be fortunate to have dinner with Swami. The first day of our life began with dinner with the Lord. Yes, I was still crying. I went for the dinner. Swami hardly ate anything. In no time, Swami had finished his dinner. And rest of the time, he was moving amidst us, blessing us, talking to us, giving so much of love. I was feeling it was heaven. For the first time, I had entered into his hostel, the boys have made it so great. They just wanted to make Swami happy. Yes, somehow I managed to give a letter to Swami. Swami, I want to be with you at Prashanti Nilayam. As per the instructions, we were in the mandir the next day morning. We were told that after morning darshan and receiving Swami's blessings, we all should leave by 8 o'clock bus for Brindavan and report in the campus. I was seated. In front of me, so many of boys who were supposed to go to Brindavan were seated. Most of them were students of Sri Sachisai Higher Secondary School, Prashanti Niliyam. They all had enjoyed so much of love from Swami, physical proximity, that they didn't want to leave Prashanti Niliyam. They were all crying to Swami, Swami, please Swami, please Swami, we want to be with you. Swami was consoling them, counseling them and telling them, I will come there. I will give you so much of time, so much of love. That campus and this campus, both are Swamis. So, please go there. I will come and shower my love upon you all. But boys didn't want to leave Swami physically, so they were all crying. Swami's heart melted. 
Swami went inside the interview room, called in the officials of the university. After some time, Swami came out, came to us directly and told, Boys, you need not go to Vrindavan. You can be with me at Prashanti Nilayam. All the students were excited. They all knelt down, surrounded Swami. And then, Swami was giving Himself to the students. I was looking around that any Sevadal would catch me if I go near Him. Fortunately, nobody was there. Slowly, I sneaked in. I went near Him. And the dream became reality. I was holding His hand in mine. I just kept His hand on my forehead. I kissed his hand, I knelt down, placed my head at his feet, kissed his lotus feet and I was in tears of gratitude that he has answered my prayers. Yes, that's how he had taken me as his student. Few days passed, I had changed my second language as Telugu. After one semester, we received an official message that all the students who were originally selected for Brindavan campus should be leaving for Brindavan campus after the vacation as per the rules of UGC and university. All the students had left for Brindavan, but I was spared. I was with Swami at Prashantinilyam. In fact, it was Guru Purnima time, all the students had come for darshan from Vrindavan. While they were leaving back for Vrindavan, Swami was blessing all of them. They were all seated in the rows. Bhagwan was coming, giving Padanam's car and Vibhuti packets. I was in Prashantinilyam. But I wanted Swami's Padanam's car. I wanted Swami's Vibhuti packets. So quietly I went and sat with them. When it came to my turn, I happily took Padnam's car. Then suddenly, Swami was about to give a bhuti packet. He stopped. Brindavan boy? Swami had asked me, as a student, for the first time when he spoke to me, that was his hint, you were supposed to be in Brindavan. Brindavan boy? No, Swami, I am from Prashanti Niliyam, Dhrnaputa. Then why are you sitting here? I was afraid that I wouldn't get Vibhuti packets for, from Swami. But the loving Lord placed in my hand so many Vibhuti packets, blessed me, smiled and moved on. That's how my journey of basking in His love began. In those days, I was watching Bhagawan calling some of the elderly devotees by their name. Hey Kasturi, Hey Karunya Ananda, Chiranjeevi Rao. Like that, Swami was calling some of the elders by their names. I was thinking in my heart, how fortunate are these people? The Lord of the universe comes down in human form here and He knows their names physically. And their names come out from His mouth. How lucky they are. Slowly, this admiration had become a strong prayer in my heart that, Swami, how fortunate I would be, Swami, if you know my name. If you call me by my name at least once, Swami, that was my prayer when I was a student. Yes, it was 92, I had finished my studies. I was in... Trai Vrindavan, again Vrindavan. I was sitting in the last row somewhere. They needed a teacher to, to teach in, Vrinda, in higher secondary school. Swami had noticed me. Swami was seated in the Jula in Vrindavan. Trai Vrindavan, he had called me, A hey boy, come here. I had come to Swami. A messy? Yes, Swami. Biosciences? Yes, Swami. I know, Ra, I know. Wherever you sit, I can know. Swami told, 
the divine lord the lord of the universe is asking my consent nuvu swami college lo pan chestava swami asked do you work in swami school i told swami swami i want to work at your lotus feet whatever it may be oh you want to work at my feet immediately swami lifted his robe lifted his leg told me ah come and sit here and swami made me sit at his feet and introduced me to professor anil kumar garu swami told ee abbai primary school nunchi man daggare chadukunnadu this boy has been studying with us from his primary school i join in ug but what the lord says is he has been studying with us from the primary school yes i was balavika student from primary school balavika student is sai student swami accepts us as his students so then itself swami had accepted me as his student and he didn't stop at that whenever he would notice me at prashanti nilayam he would call me a hey, at law and teaching a hey, how is your teaching are the boys awake in your class are they sleeping that was his concern about his students yes i wanted swami to know my name as when i was student i was praying for that i became a teacher it was my birthday in fact he used to trouble me whenever i would give a letter to swami swami would see the letter satish your birthday on february 1st yes swami i will not be there for your birthday i will go up to brindavan swami please swami please swami please swami you should be there and he would definitely come back he would go to brindavan but he would come back one or two days before and he would bless me and it was my birthday i was holding a tray with toffees cloves yellow grains etc swami i had a long list of desires so many things to be fulfilled i will give you what you ask so that one day at least you will ask what i want to give you that's what the lord says yes i had a long list of desires swami please bless me on my birthday swami please put a low grains on my head on my birthday swami please swami give me pad namaskar on my birthday swami please create vibhuti on my birthday swami Swami after giving me vibhuti the leftover vibhuti please sprinkle on my face swami swami whatever vibhuti is stuck on your thumb please put on my forehead and put a tilak for me swami swami please accept one clove from my tray swami swami please sign on the photograph for me swami with love baba like this i had unending desires the loving lord patiently one by one one by one he had fulfilled all those desires and then i had forgotten one which i had asked him when i was a student swami should know my name swami looked at me and told satish and swami told mother in law swami would make pun with the word mother in law if bhagwan is the mother of all the students the wardens or the teachers at the hostel swami would consider and tell their mother in mothers in law mother in law is mother in law we should treat the students as our own children we should treat them as though you are their mother that's what what is swami's expectations yes swami had told like that i was very happy i was in seventh i was in seventh heaven that lord knows my name swami had answered my prayer which was in my heart when i was a student isn't it good but the story doesn't end here 
After 10 years, Bhagawan visited hostel. You had seen one such visit to the hostel. Yes? When Bhagawan comes to the hostel, the student would not sleep the previous night. Inch by inch, they'll be cleaning, making it look like a heaven. They want to bring one smile on his face. They just want to make him happy. That's what they wanted. They did their best and the divine visit. At one moment during that divine visit, I was with the Lord. Swami looked at me and asked me, Nipere Emiti, what is your name? Swami had asked me. I immediately knelt down in front of him and asked him, I told Swami, Swami Satish. Bhajans were going on. Swami pretended as though he could not hear. He asked me, ah? I made it louder. I told Swami, Satish. Swami asked, ah? It was going on. Bhagawan was asking me again and again. I was telling Satish, Swami Satish, Swami Satish. I had a desire. Swami should know my name and see the Lord after 10 years. He was asking my name again and again. At that time, I felt Swami actually is able to hear me. He wants to have some fun with me. So what very intelligently and cleverly from my mind and brain, not from my heart, a lip service, I told Swami, Swami knows everything. It took so much more time for me to know that Swami knows everything. But at that time, I had theoretical knowledge. Swami smiled and moved on. How much loving He is. I had asked something when I was a student and after 10 years also, He was fulfilling my desire and He was making sure that He knows my name. It didn't stop there. Another 10 years passed. I was in Bhajan Hall. The Lord was seated in the Bhajan Hall on the throne. I had a problem. I went to Swami. I had conveyed the problem to the Lord. I had sought His blessings. Swami gave me assurance. After taking Swami's blessings, I took His permission, took Padnamskar. I was going back. And you know what Swami had done? Swami had called me back. A. Em peru ni peru Satya Narayana. Swami had called me and asked me, Hey, what's your name? Isn't it Satya Narayana? I rushed back. I went to the Lord. I looked at him and told, No, Swami, my name is Satish. Satish? Swami had asked in such a tone that your name should be Satya Narayana and how do you say that it's, it's Satish? I told Swami, No, Swami, my name is not Satya Narayana. My name is Satish. I asked his permission to take Panamskar again and I was going back. The Divine Lord had felt pity upon me, looked straight into me when his vision penetrated into my heart. Then I understood. Fifty-five years back from now, when I was born, my parents had given me a name, Satya Narayana. While admitting me in the school, they had changed <laughs> as Satish. They had told me I had forgotten conveniently. I had asked him, Swami should know my name. He proved to me, Bangaru, I not only know the name that you know as your name, but I know the name that you forgot that it is your name. That is His love. That is His grace. A single prayer, I forget. Man gets and forgets. God gives and forgives. Yes, I had forgotten, but Swami didn't forget. I just, I will just narrate another such episode of love, a fleeting thought in my mind, how Swami had responded. It was Vijaya Dashmi time, Dashara time. 
Veda Purusha Jnana Saptahi Yajna was going on. On the day of Ayudha Puja, all the vehicles at Prashanti Niliyam will be placed and Bhagavan would come to each of those vehicles, would break a coconut and he would get into each of those vehicles and the most fortunate drivers would get in and they will drive Swami for a small distance and then Swami would come out, take a photograph with all those fortunate drivers and I knew this. On that day, I was having my own calculations. I was wondering, okay, today definitely Swami would come in a particular path. From interview room to the place where vehicles are parked. So if I sit in that path, I would definitely get many number of times Padnamaskar. That was my clever idea. And then, I was thinking, where in that path, if I sit, I can get Pad Namaskar for longer duration. You all must have seen Prashanti Niliyam. As we enter into the portico, it leads to the bhajan hall. When the portico ends, there would be a slopey area. Near that place, where that portico ends, there used to be a huge choir mat. I wanted to sit on that. Why? When Bhagawan comes either to bless these vehicles and the drivers or when Swami is returning, Swami would slow down in that area, in that mat, in that door mat area. It would obstruct His path so I can have Padramskar for longer duration. That was my plan. I was sitting there waiting for the Lord and my plan really worked out. Swami had come in that path so many times, I had Padanamskar so many times. But something else had happened. Our minds are experts. Our mind is expert in not feeling happy with what God has blessed us with, but we would compare ourselves with others. God has given them that, this, and I didn't get that too. We compare and confuse. Yes, it was happening that day. After crossing that area where I was sitting, when Swami was going in that slope area, what Bhagawan would do? He would place his hand on the heads of all the students who were seated on both sides as though he wanted support and he was keeping his hand on their heads and walking. First time I had noticed. Second time I had noticed. I was thinking, I chose a wrong place. I should have sat in that area. I would have got the wonderful blessing of Swami's hand on my head. I was cursing myself for the wrong choice. I was praying to Swami, 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 please Swami, please keep your hand on my head also. But Lord never keeps. He would bless only them and not me. I was only crying in my heart and I was praying to Him. Yes, it was the last time Swami was coming in that path. But this time, Swami did not keep His hand on anybody's head. So, I didn't have that thought of praying to Him. Swami went down the slope. He had blessed somebody. While coming back too, Swami did not keep His hand on anybody's head. So, I didn't pray for that opportunity. I was busy in looking at the lovely lotus feet and I was immersed in taking the Padanamaskar. And then what did I feel? Something was on my head. The Lord had answered my prayer. Swami had kept His hand on my head. I was very happy blissful and what did the Lord do? Slowly he held my hair in his hand and started walking forward. And what do I do? I was kneeling down and crawling after Swami. After some time the Lord stopped, released my hair, looked back, 
smiled lovingly and told, Higher secondary school? Yes, Swami. Swami knows everything, but sometimes He makes us know that He knows us too. That's how He showers His grace and answers a prayer, maybe a fleeting thought in our minds. Yes. I used to hear so many discourses and Bhagwan would talk about so many devotees. Many devotees always had a wonderful relationship with our Lord. I too wanted to have a great relationship with our God. I wanted Swami to be my mother. In my heart, I would address Him in my letters to Him. In fact, I must have written at least some 500 or 600 letters and I would have given to Him. In all those letters, it's the same prayer, Amma, Mother, Sai Mata, Mother Sai, please keep me at your lotus feet. Please fill my heart with love and devotion. Please don't send me away from you, Swami. Maybe my fate is that I would have to leave your lotus feet and go outside, but only you can change the destiny, Swami. In fact, he would trouble me. Whenever I give a letter, he would ask me, after BSc, MSc. After MSc, I will do MRS for you and I will send you out. I would pray, Swami, 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 please, Swami, please, Swami, don't send me out, Swami. And on another occasion, Swami came and asked me, Emira, you have two mothers, Niku Iddar Ammala, you have two mothers. I told, yes, Swami. Then Swami pointed at towards the devotee's line and one mother is sitting there. Yes, Bhagavan knows where my mother was sitting in the crowd of thousands of devotees. Swami exactly pointed at that spot and told, one mother is sitting there. I told, yes, Swami. One more mother? I looked at him. Oh, one more mother is in your pocket? I told, yes, Swami. And Swami took out the photograph of Swami from my pocket. This is your second mother? Yes, Swami. Swami smiled. Patted and put back the photograph in my pocket. One mother, not one mother, thousands of mothers love. Anyway, that was how I would address Swami as my mother. In those days, after Swami goes into the bhajan hall, all the students would get up, move forward, in such a way that they would see Swami, even though Swami was sitting in bhajan hall. And when such movement occurs, what I would do, I would go and sit near in Prashantinaliyam. There is one particular room, it is known as interview room. Swami used to give devotees interview there. I used to sit there near the window of that interview room. For what? When Bhagwan is in bhajan hall, when bhajans are going on, some devotee would have prayed, Swami, Swami, please Swami, please once come outside Swami, please give us darshan again Swami. They would be praying to Swami and Bhagwan would come out during bhajans from bhajan hall and again give second time bonus darshan. Yes. I was sitting there in that spot, I was having one letter of this prayer and when Bhagavan, somebody's prayer Swami had answered and he came in that path, I offer this letter to Swami. How was I holding the letter? If this is a letter, I wouldn't hold the letter like this because if I hold this letter and give, Swami would pick up the letter from the other end. So purposefully, I would hold the letter like this and I would offer to Swami. When you are offering a letter, Swami would look at you, that is the first blessing. And when, while taking the letter, while accepting the letter, the God would hold the letter. At that time, He would touch you. 
in that process i would release the letter in his divine hands the touch that transforms darshanam papanashanam sparshanam sankata vimochanam yes i was trying i offered the letter of prayer to swami swami had accepted that letter and went to give darshan and he went back to the bhajan hall from the other door immediately i picked up my notebook tore one page and started writing one more letter what if the lord comes again i should have one more letter yes i had written the letter i was holding and i was praying and somebody else must have prayed the lord swami please come outside the divine lord on that day had come outside during bhajans the second time too swami came out in the same path i had given one more letter to swami swami had accepted that prayer too swami went on to give darshan i was very happy how lucky today one day two letters that was my happiness but our mind is expert in not rejoicing what god has given but always finding out something that god has not given and we keep crying and complaining yes suddenly as i was happy for some time i remember swami has come in this path twice and i didn't get path namaskar i was busy in offering the letter to swami so i was thinking swami has come twice and i didn't get padanamaskar how can it happen i should get padanamaskar so i was continuously praying in my heart amma mother sai sai mata sai mata please sai mata i missed padanamaskar sai mata sai mata please so in that process the prayer became more and more strong sai mata sai mata sai mata i was continuously praying and praying that swami should come and give me padmanamskar very stubborn insisting that swami should come again and give me padmanamskar we devotees sometimes do so and then for the third time on that day the lord slowly came down again from his throne slowly walked in that path came near me to my heart's content i had pad namaskar he didn't go anywhere further he just stood somewhere near me from there he was swaying to the tunes of bhajans after some time he turned back he was coming back to the mandir bhajan hall he stopped near me and asked me e mira a ammai vachinda literally translating emira watra that girl has come i was kneeling down and telling swami no swami nobody has come the divine lord very lovingly looked at me and told a ammai vachindira vachindi vachindi she has come ra Three, three times bhagwan repeated she has come she has come she has come i was telling our lord swami no swami no swami please swami nobody has come swami i was taking i was a human being i was taking worldly meaning the divine lord a spiritual meaning finally he felt this fellow won't understand that easily he looked at me lovingly and with that dhiyo yona prachodayat he eliminates our intellects at that time i understood the significance of what he was asking me a ammai vachindira vachindi vachindi means ammai means amma plus ai you must be knowing satya sai sa plus ai the divine mother ammai mother of mothers the mother 
of the universe, Mother Sai, she has come, Ra, she has come, she has come. Three times Swami had come by that time and Swami was hinting to me, Ammai vachindi Ra, vachindi vachi. That is the love of the Divine Mother Sai. That is how any prayer in our heart, He will take all the trouble and He will bless us. From the hostel, normally boys used to go for darshan every evening and only on Sundays and on festive occasions they would go for darshan in the morning times. Very rarely, Bhagawan would send a message, tomorrow morning boys can come for darshan. It was one such divine call. All the boys were excited for unexpected boon. In the morning by 5.30, all the students were having their breakfast. I was discharging one of my assigned duties. At the time, one of the students had come to me and told me, Sir, in our room, one of the boys has severe headache. He wants you to come and see him and give him medicine. I told him, definitely I will do so after finishing this work. Everybody was in a hurry to get ready and go for darshan. All the students had finished their breakfast and they were rushing towards mandir. I too took my plate for the breakfast. I was about to take breakfast and I heard some voice. A voice not from outside, from within. Satish, yes, you want to have breakfast? Of course. You want to go for darshan too? Obviously, Swami, the merciful Lord, has called us for morning darshan. I would definitely go. And you finish breakfast and slowly you would go there and Swami would wait for you. I understood the message. I took back my plate. For God, for Swami, if I don't have breakfast, what does it matter? Just see, when the God comes down in human form, it's not one coconut or few bananas are given to God. Any thought that we get it, we can offer to Him. Any word of ours, we can offer to Him. Any action of ours, we can offer to Him. Anything we can offer to Him. God teaches that anything you offer to me, I will accept it. I was thinking, after all a breakfast, versus darshan, I wouldn't have breakfast. I rushed to Mandar. Again, I was choosing a good place where if I sit, I can see Swami closely, where if I sit, I could have Padanamaskar. I was searching for a place. I was about to sit. Suddenly, I heard a voice within. Satish? Yes? Do you know that Swami has given the duty of taking care of His children? Yes, He is very loving. He has blessed me with this opportunity. And you know that one boy had headache and he wanted to see you? I remembered immediately. Yes, I had forgotten. Do you think you can neglect His children and come for darshan here? No, no, it's not so. I would immediately rush back and go to hostel and see him. I was about to get up and go for darshan, go for, go to hostel and see that boy. At that moment, another voice told, Satish, how much time do you take to go to hostel? Fifteen minutes. Coming back, another fifteen minutes. Seeing that boy, maybe ten to fifteen minutes. Do you think forty-five minutes Swami will wait for you so that you will come back after that and Swami will give you darshan? No, sorry, Swami won't wait for me. And you would miss darshan? Yes, I don't want to miss his darshan. No, I'll stay back. There was a fight going on whether to go for God's work or to stay back for God's darshan. 
and I was praying, Swami, I should have remembered Swami, I should have seen that boy and come back, Swami. Slowly, our prayers keep changing. Swami, you should have reminded me, Swami. Yes, we keep blame on God sometimes. Swami, if you had reminded me, I would have seen that boy and come and now I have to go and I'll miss your darshan. No, Swami, I'm not going. I'm not going to see that boy. Swami, instead of me, you go and see that boy. Swami, instead of me, you go and give him medicine. This is how I had offered the problem to him. And once I had offered to him, I was at peace with myself. Darshanam, Sparshanam, Sambhashanam. That day, Swami gave discourse to, we had enjoyed. And after the program, we all came back and immediately we had to go to college, school, as we had regular classes. And it was on that day during lunch break, all the students were taking their lunch and I was standing in one corner of the dining hall and watching if all the children are eating sufficient food. At that time, this boy had come to me and told, Sir, thank you so much. I was not remembering anything. I was not remembering that he had headache. So, I was wondering why this boy is telling me thanks. But anyway, just to have some fun with him, I told, you're most welcome. He smiled and he was going back. Then I called him and asked him, why are you thanking me? Did I do any favor to you? He stared at me. He wanted to know what were my intentions. And then he told me, Sir, I had headache. You have given me medicine. And now I'm completely all right. Thank you so much, Sir, he told me. I told him, Oh, you have headache? And I, have, I had given medicine. And you became completely all right? Wonderful. That boy told me, thank you so much, sir, and he was leaving. I called him back again. I didn't give you any medicine. This time, this boy was thinking, sir is pulling my leg. For fun, he's troubling me. Both of us were trying to convince the other. And finally, I had asked him, did you see me? No, sir. Why? I don't know, sir. I didn't feel like opening my eyes. It was divine maya, divine power. Maybe God will that way, I think. Oh, you didn't see me. Then how do you know that I had come to you? Sir, I know your voice. And you had called me by my name, how you regularly address me. And you had asked me to open my mouth, you had put tablets and water, and after that I had slipped off. It, that time it dawned to me. Instead of asking Swami, Swami please take care of that boy, I told Swami, you go instead of me. Swami, you give him medicine instead of me. We devotees, we keep putting several conditions to our Lord. Still, the merciful Lord fulfills all of our prayers as per our prayers. And then He makes us happy and proves us that He always listens to our call. I had a good fortune of narrating this incident in His Divine Presence once in Bhajan Hall. Swami accepted me. Let me narrate another incident. It was one morning, one student had come to me and asked me, Sir, I want to tell you something. You know, last night what had happened? I asked him, what had happened? He told me, some of us, we were discussing about Swami. While we were talking about Swami, one of the boys had asked, 
we hear that vibhuti comes from this photograph that photograph this home that place but why vibhuti doesn't come in our hostel one boy had asked another boy with lot of wisdom as shared his knowledge and told why should swami send vibhuti through a photograph when he is there physically with us and creating vibhuti on your birthday he creates vibhuti when you have a problem he creates vibhuti he gives so many vibhuti packets why should swami send vibhuti through photographs it was somewhat logical so he was silenced and this boy who had come to me had asked this is swami appears in america he appears in japan why shouldn't swami appear in our hostel this boy had asked again the same boy with the wisdom had told why should swami appear for you every day is giving you darshan in fact you are happily sitting and he would take the trouble of going around you and giving you darshan don't you feel happy with that why should swami appear when he is giving the devotees from far away lands that they have their pining for the lord's darshan they cry out they can't afford to come as often as you are going for darshan every day so they would cry to him and he would appear for a moment and he is giving you darshan every day why should swami appear to you it was very logical and there was a bell indicating that study hours had ended that is time for studies had ended and in those days in the living rooms of the students we never had fans and students used to roll their beds and move towards dining hall where so many fans were there yes that day for some reason this boy was very exhausted and tired he didn't even open his bed he was leaning against his bed and he went to sleep rest of the students had left the room they have gone to dining hall only he was lying down in the room somewhere in the midnight due to awkward posture he woke up and what did he see swami was standing near the door blessing him smiling and slowly gesturing him sleep sleep and only that much he knew he went back to deep slumber a blissful sleep the next morning he was narrating this to me like a typical teacher i had told him bangaru you are very very fortunate that swami had appeared for you but remember to those to those who much is given much is expected you better behave the way he wants you to behave be a good boy i gave my wisdom and then i gave him a statutory warning i told him please do not share this experience with anyone he asked me why sir a reflection of the inner being i told him people may not believe you the days passed it was winter vacation some of the students used to stay back during winter vacation or any other vacation at prashanti niliyam so that they could be very close to the lord and they'll get the divine proximity and wonderful chances yes this boy to stay back true to their prayer that day morning swami had called all of them into the bhajan hall all the doors windows everything was closed all were closed and bhagwan was giving them so much of joy happiness bliss and what would he do he was arranging all the statues in the bhajan hall that day you must have seen in bhajan mandir lord krishna statue shridhi swami's statue he was arranging them aligning them in a correct position that day and what the lord would do he would give them so much of happiness fun living with god is happiness happiness is union with god as yes, that day 
he would pick up a telugu boy and talk to him in tamil a tamil boy in kannada kannada boy in malayalam malayalam boy in hindi hindi boy in english you know in different languages he would call them they wouldn't understand what swami was telling them they would be confused and they would do quite opposite of what the lord was telling them to do it was this boy's turn swami had called him that boy who had come to me and told swami had appeared for him this boy's turn Swami had called, he was a Telugu boy. Swami had called him and told him, I was, sit, I was standing in the bhajan hall. All the students were seated, few teachers were standing at the back. Swami had called that boy and told him to climb up on the stage of bhajan mandir. And in some other language, he was instructing him to realign the position of Ganesha statue near Bhagawan's picture. and definitely as per the divine will he got confused and he was doing what swami was telling he was doing opposite and immediately swami would catch him and make fun at that time suddenly swami had told one specific dialogue in telugu loudly till then swami was very soft and gentle but that sentence swami had told very loudly ah రూమ్ లో బెడ్ కూడా ఓపెన్ చేయకుండా పడుకుంటావు మరి ఏం చేస్తావు యూ స్లీప్ ఇన్ యువర్ ఓన్ రూమ్ వితౌట్ ఈవెన్ ఓపెనింగ్ యువర్ బెడ్ ఇన్ ద రూమ్ ఇట్ సెల్ఫ్ యూ విల్ స్లీప్ ఆఫ్ వాట్ ఎల్స్ యూ విల్ డూ దాట్ వాజ్ ద డైలాగ్ ఓన్లీ దాట్ డైలాగ్ హి టోల్డ్ వెరీ లౌడ్ అండ్ క్లియర్ అండ్ ద మెసేజ్ వాజ్ క్లియర్ టు మీ ఆఫ్టర్ that session that boy came running to me and told me sir that day swami had really appeared how do you know i had asked him you know swami had given a hint sir what had happened that day swami had told now i told him yes he has given hint to you and given hint to me and he has cleared all the doubts for both of us that is his love that is his grace what does it prove casual remark in the room casual talk but he is a member swami is a member of all the sai families an unseen member living with us all the time listening to our talks all the time and coming to answer our prayers whenever we look up to him if you look to me i will look to you that is his love in those days when i was a student i had noticed swami would love one particular dance it was punjabi dance a harvest dance normally we call it bhangda dance swami would call all the students who were who ever participated in the dance and give them so many chances he would give them clothes he would give them photograph gifts fruits talk to them and i had a desire that i should become a part of that dance so i had approached one of my room seniors he was part of the dance and i had asked him brother it was in my first ug in 87 i had asked him brother can you please take me into this dance i want to get some chances from swami he knew very well that i didn't know any dance but he couldn't tell me that directly satyam bhuyat priyam bhuyat na bhuyat satyam apriyam you cannot tell a truth in an unpleasant manner so very intelligently he told me satish i would have been very happy to take you into this dance but i am not permitted to do so only swami can add anybody into this dance he was thinking if he uses swami's name i would be silenced but i was very happy oh if i ask swami that's all and that day evening darshan time i was in first line somehow i made it possible 
the lord had given darshan swami had finished interviews and he was spending some time with the students and i would somehow try to distract his attention i wanted to attract his attention towards me finally the lord looked at me emira hey, emi kawali what do you want swami had asked me i was innocent just then joined i didn't know what to ask there is no context no explanation directly i stood up and told swami i want to dance and the students around me were puzzled this fellow doesn't know any dance and he is asking directly i want to dance how dare he is they were quite serious what would happen now they were wondering they were wondering so but the lord knows how to change any scene in the way he wanted immediately as though he was joking he smiled he knows the heart of every prayer he looked at me smiling as though he was joking oh you want to dance go there and dance swami showed me a point where i could go and dance and what was that place that was the place where all the lady devotees were seated and all the students from the serious mood they started laughing at my cost i was also happy anyway if swami had not taken me into the dance never mind bhagwan looked at me he spoke to me that's more than enough i was happy i thought the matter ended there no prayer is unanswered yes after one year for bhagwan's birthday devotees from east godavari district andhra pradesh had brought a dance in front of swami it was called a traditional local dance called chakka bhajan they would hold some wooden instrument they'll be beating rhythmically singing out songs of god and dancing vibrantly and bhagwan loved that dance maybe he would have remembered those days of his early childhood pandari bhajan and swami expressed his desire that the dance teacher should come and teach the students this particular dance yes he came for sports meet and what a wonderful occasion it was normally different campuses would present different items and programs to please swami but this time that was swami's presentation swami's item to present to the devotees swami had come to see the dance practice at least 15 to 20 times and close intimate interaction with all the students and one day swami had told boys today you come and practice in mandir swami had told we were more than happy we are we are practicing a sports meet item in the mandir and of course it was not a darshan time when there were no devotees we all went there we were all waiting for the lord swami had come and swami wanted to choose a spot where the dance could be performed or practiced and swami told ah all of you go there and dance what is that spot that spot as though he was joking to me some one year ago oh you want to dance go and dance there and that was the same spot he called us and made us go and dance we did practice swami was with us he enjoyed the practice and gave us bliss when he says one word the entire universe conspires and waits for its his command and it will follow if he says it has to happen i still remember it was a cyclone in andhra pradesh bay of bengal 
At that time, there were heavy rains for so many days at Prashanti Nilayam. We students, there was no Sai Kulvant Hall at that time. We were all seated in a congested manner, close to each other. We were all waiting for Swami. The Lord has come out from the interview room and he had noticed that, that we had a little tough time. The devotees were having tough time. I was watching that. Swami went, lifted his left hand and told, stop. At that moment, not after a second, at that moment, instantly, the rain had stopped as though somebody had kept their hands and blocked the rain. We were all clapping by seeing His power over the nature. But what the Lord would do? Very gently, as though nothing had happened, what was the breakfast today morning? Idlis? How many idlis you all were given? Small idlis or big idlis? Imagine the Lord who has controlled the entire universe doesn't give importance to His powers. He just talks about day-to-day -day activities. That is His love. That is His kindness. As Balvika student, I was told, I was taught, Matru Devo Bhava, Pitru Devo Bhava. Yes, it was a vacation time. Bhagwan was leaving for Kodai Canal. I was forced to go home. At home, during that vacation, on every day, I would sit at the feet of my parents. I would press their legs in the night time. What was I doing? I was imagining as though I was doing for Swami. I was thinking that Swami says, if you love and respectfully you touch your parents' feet, it would directly reach me. Bhagavan says so. So I was thinking, if I press their feet and do service, it would definitely reach Swami. Yes, throughout the two months' time, I was doing that. While I was returning to Prashanti Nilayam, a few days earlier, before the vacation ended, Bhagwan had come back to Prashanti Nilayam that time. While I was going, I was praying to Swami. Swami, all through the two months' vacation, I was doing Pad Seva for my parents and I suppose it would have reached you. If it has reached you, Swami, will you give me Pad Namaskar, Pad Seva chance, directly, physically? It was my prayer and it reaches Swami. The prayer reaches and the service in the name of Swami, we have done that also reaches. Yes, what had happened that day? All the students had darshan in the morning. After that, Swami went inside the interview room and the students had gone back to hostel to have breakfast quickly and come back before Swami would return from the interview room. I didn't want to go, thinking that if Swami comes early, I would be sitting in the first line, I would get more close chance. Yes, it happened that day. Swami had finished the interviews and he had come out. I was sitting in the first line. Swami saw all the students' mats were placed. Oh, reservation, reservation. Swami was joking and asked, where are the boys? Oh, they have gone to put petrol. Swami laughed, joked. And Swami saw a few of us, ah, all of you go inside. And I was in first line, so I was the first person to run in. I sat in the interview room near his simhasan. And for 45 minutes, we had an interview with the Lord. All the time, I was able to do Padaseva. For 45 minutes, God had blessed me for what I had done to please Him during the vacation. Any service that you do, at any place, it would reach Him. 
my time is getting over it's not those days bhagwan used to tell in the discourses people see that i was in shirdi people see that i am in purti it's not so any time any devotee thinks of me i would manifest in front of his own eyes bhagwan used to tell and it is true it's not that he was there then and now we are missing him no he is with us i just tell you one or two incidents before i wind up one day morning one of the students had come to me and told me sir in our hostel dining hall we have so many bhagwan's pictures and all of them have a wonderful garlands but the main altar photograph it doesn't have any garland can you please arrange one garland he had asked me i called that boy come inside he came into the warden's office i told him dear one why should you ask anything from any other human being why don't you learn to depend on god for everything in your life let us do this thing we both will turn to swami and we would ask him for the garland we both turned to swami's picture and we had asked swami we wanted a garland i told that student dear one i am not going to make any arrangements to make one garland for this photograph because it wouldn't be an experience for you you should know in your life that if you ask swami swami would listen to your prayers yes it was birthday time 18th november we have rathotsavam on that day that morning i opened the hostel door outside the hostel in the lawns on a platform i had seen a heap of garlands i was thinking maybe sevadal people would have kept there to arrange for bhagwan's birthday celebrations i thought so we went for suprabhatam after suprabhatam i came back again i noticed the same thing then i noticed one message in my mobile it says sir in the very early morning we had got these garlands we had actually got them for decorating that chariot for rathotsavam few garlands were extra we thought we would leave them in the hostel at that time hostel gate was closed so we had placed them in the hostel lawns kindly use them sir that was the message i was very happy i was looking for somebody's help i was just trying to call some boy i looked at one boy was coming towards me i told boy please come here i know who is that boy that was a boy who was praying with me for the godland it's not a coincidence it is a sai incidence but i also f- had forgotten neither me nor he neither i nor he both of us have forgotten we were thinking casually i told him could you please go to the dining hall kitchen and bring some trays and bring some boys and bring take these garlands to the altar immediately he had called some boys they have shifted the garland to the altar and that boy happened to be an altar boy in charge of maintaining altar and i told him uh, could you please uh, decorate swami's pictures with these garlands he was very happy he decorated with so many garlands what take one step towards me i shall take 10 swami asked we had we had asked for one garland he had given us hundreds he had decorated so many garlands were there that we had to send to our neighboring sister institutions yes but he didn't remember that he had asked i didn't remember that i also had asked it was breakfast time he was taking his plate and entering into the dining hall as he was entering into the dining hall he was looking at the photographs he was admiring himself how beautifully i had decorated swami's pictures he was thinking like that then he overheard that serving boys two of them 
who are talking to each other a little bit loudly, miracles do happen even now, but it's just that we won't notice. That was the dialogue he was hearing from here and he was looking at the photograph and then something happened here. He rushed to me and told, Sir, do you remember we both had prayed for one garland and Swami had sent so many. Then I realized how God <laughs> answered. He was there with us, he is there with us now also. He just hears any prayer. It didn't end there. It was November 22nd. I'll just end with this experience. I saw one Sevadal entering into the hostel. He had carried one big bag and placed it on the table in the hostel lobby and he was leaving and I asked him, what is this for? This is for the hostel, he had told. Who has sent? I don't know. Somebody has called us and told to deliver here. What does it contain? It contains some garland. And he was in a hurry. He vanished. And then we opened. We saw a huge garland of roses, best fit for Swami's picture in the main altar. We just asked. He kept on sending his blessings. He is with us all the time and that is our experience day and night. He is all the time with us. Let us love Him. Let us live for Him. Let us lose ourselves in His love. May Swami bless us all. May Swami use us his, as His instruments. I thank the team, Samarpan, the students for loving me so much and taking care of me so much. I express our, my love and sincere thanks to you all, brothers. May God bless you all. I take leave of you. Sairam.